can't explain on BBC Lincolnshire and BBC Radio Humberside, especially for Carl Palmer, our guest on the programme tonight, who you can see in Hessel, Hessel Town Hall, on the 17th of May. Nowadays in music, you do see these pioneers come along, whether it be Madonna, whether it be The Who, The Beatles, or Lady Gaga. <laughs> but I imagine when you saw The Who, when you think, well, ten years before that, it was Nat King Cole and Frank Sinatra, The Balladeers, and ten years <laughs> before that, The Wall. I suppose... It must have really come as a shock. Oh, it was fantastic. I mean, when you think about the amount of creativity that comes from this small island, England, really, it's just unbelievable, you know, what we've produced, you know, whether it be people like the Pink Floyd or whether it be the Who or whoever it might be. There's just so much which has come out of England. And um, I think there's, there's, there's some great artists. I mean, you know, Ray Davis is just one of our greatest all-time writers, just like Roy Wood. You know, think how great Roy Wood is. He's had like 18 top 10 hits in the UK so songs he's written. I mean, it's just phenomenal, really, what we've got going on in this country. The talent is just unbelievable. And to be part of, you know, a lot of that, to be around when this was happening, for me, has been, you know, some of the biggest uh, inspirations one could ever sort of get, really. You've inspired other people. We've found out about your inspiration. But if you hadn't have been a drummer, what do you think you'd have been doing? Um, you know, I'm not really sure. Um, I, I come from a, quite a big musical family, but we were also retailers, so uh, I doubt if I would have ended up working in one of the shops full-time, but obviously that would have taken place. I'd have probably gone into something like... Um, well, my daughter's a lawyer, so I'm always interested in, in, in law, so I might have become a, a solicitor or something like that. What inspired you to pick up the sticks? Uh... I just, I was travelling on a bus one day uh, into Birmingham and I looked into this music store and I could see this red glitter drum, this snare drum, and I thought, oh, that's nice. And my family were trying to get me to, to play an instrument and I wasn't too keen. I did start playing the banjo when I was seven, but they did like me playing the banjo because it was a bit of a joke, you know, George Formby and all that stuff. But I really liked it, but they weren't, they weren't keen on me doing that. So I saw the drum, asked them to buy me a drum set, they bought me a drum set, and uh, the rest is history, really. And what about ELP? How did that come about? ELP was put together basically through EG management. These were the people that were taking care of uh, people like Roxy Music, King Crimson, uh, T-Rex at the time, and uh, they asked me if I was interested in playing with Keith Emerson and Greg Lake, who were already together uh, as a duo, you know, looking for a drummer, uh, because they'd left their individual bands, The Nice and King Crimson, and uh, I got a call from their management, actually David Entoven, a very, very nice chap who manages Robbie Williams was the guy that called me at the time and said, would you come along and play? I'd got my own group, the Atomic Rooster, so that was, uh, that was a, a big thing for me to sort of give that up and leave. And of course, when I did give it up and leave the Atomic Rooster to join Greg and Keith, I think within about six weeks, I was still rehearsing, the Atomic Rooster had re-recorded a track that I'd done with them, which was called Tomorrow Night, and it went to number one. So I thought, hey, I might have made a mistake here, <laughs> like you do. <laughs> and around that time, Time. It's a generational period, isn't it, the 70s? Absolutely. Like the 60s. Yeah, yeah. What was it like being part of that, being part of that fabric of that music scene? I think, yeah, as I said to you before, there was so much going on. There's so many really inventive, creative people. It was just great to be around all of that all of the time. And to go to America in 68, when you're at the back end of that kind of flower power sort of era, you know, you've got Jefferson Aeroplane, you've got the Grateful Dead, and experience that side of the of the pond as well as uh, England. It was just a, a great, great, great period for me and a great education and uh, I think it's just kept me interested in music all this time because I've just learnt so much from the th from the get-go, from mm, the minute mm. I left Birmingham and moved to London. It's just been a great adventure. Ever meet Bowie and Ronson? Um, I met David Bowie at the Carlton Ballroom in Birmingham. I was in a band called the King Bees. He was uh, called David Bowie at the time, Bowie. And he came up to us and said, oh, I used to be in a group called the King Bees, and that was the only time I ever met him. <laughs> we'll come and see you on the 17th of May. Fantastic, oh, that, that sounds great. It's you and a pair of drums, I guess. Hey, it's me and uh, Paul Bielatovich on lead guitar, and it's um, Simon Fitzpatrick on bass. We'll be playing roughly an hour, 50 minutes. We'll be playing uh, pictures at an exhibition by Mazorsky. A lot of classical mm. adaptations. Aaron Copeland, Ho Down, Fanfare, the hit that Emerson, Lake and Palmer had. Playing a couple of... Uh, um, pieces from uh, original pieces of ELP, Tarkus and Bitches Crystal, um, but an enjoyable show. It's, an, as I say, an hour, 50 minutes. There's some solos and things. It's instrumental prog metal rock <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> Try and find too many people doing that these Absolutely. days. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's very difficult, let me tell you. <laughs> Carl, good to welcome you to Lincolnshire and East Yorkshire. Thank you very much indeed.